What's going on everybody? This is John Myers at Myers Guitars. And I wanted to show you my Dream Stingray. This is a project I did. Uh, I saw Low End Lobster doing all those modded uh, sub-series basses. And I've always, I've been playing them for a couple years. And I really liked them. And they've always played so nice. And I saw him modding them and all. And I was like, you know what? That's something I want to do for sure. So I pulled the trigger on one. Uh, couldn't be happier, to be honest with you. These bases at $2.99, can't be beat, really can't. Uh, they got that um, thinner nut width, which is what I prefer. I don't have big hands, so it's perfect for me. Uh, and the, the platform is there to mod out. I mean, stock, it's already just fine. Um, but it's there if you want to mod it, and it's easy to do so. So that's what I did with mine. I wanted to change it around, make it look more like the American versions, having a gloss finish. Um, and then I did string mutes on the bridge. Um, once again, thanks to Lobster. And along with the anchors right here on the bridge. So I did the threaded inserts into the body uh, and then found machine screws that fit those threaded inserts and got all that mounted in there uh, and, did the, uh, and did the string mutes. That was about the hardest part, to be honest with you, with string mutes, because you have to locate the holes drill them and then tap them, uh, thread them, add threads to it to make it all work. So that's probably the hardest part. And, but what I use, uh, just so you see, is I used this lacquer. It's a semi-gloss uh, spray cam. And I did that for the neck and the body. Uh, all I did was just wash everything down uh, with alcohol to get all the um, dirt and grime off of it. Um, it's a pretty new base, and not that it was too grimy, but still, uh, you always need to clean it before you paint it. And anyway, I sprayed the neck with probably about four coats of the lacquer on it. I did not sand it back, didn't buff it at all. And so this is literally straight from the can, straight to plain, and it's perfect. There's no issues whatsoever. The body, on the other hand, you have to spray a good bit on that. I would say about a can and a half at least, to be honest with you. Uh, and then I wet sanded it back. Um, to about what I do, 1500 grit sandpaper is what I wet sanded it to. Started off with uh, 1000 and went to 1500, and then I buffed it, and you you get this. Looks great. Uh, came out perfect. I mean, really did. And there's some imperfections, of course, because I'm using a spray can and I'm in my garage, so I don't have all the equipment like I used to with spray guns and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so I use what I got now. Anyway, it came out great. So, uh, but I just want to show you. Uh, what I did with mine because I feel like it took this base to a whole nother level and doing this was cheap. I mean you can just do the finish with less than $20 because I would say each one of these cans are less than 10 and I would say two cans total is what you would need maybe uh, one and a half two cans uh, so because you only need four coats for the neck and I wouldn't load it up I just put on four coats in a day let it sit and I was done uh, the body took me a couple days to get it built up enough to where I felt comfortable with sanding it back. Um, but yeah, that's it. And then I did mod the pickup as well on this base. This is a GFS uh, pickup. So everything on here I've done has been pretty budget really. So the GFS pickup, awesome pickup. This is their ceramic version for the Music Man style base. And it's a ceramic. It comes pre-wired uh, for uh, series but it's way too muddy and just in it and it overloads the circuit to my recording gear just like the stock pickup that's the reason why i changed it uh, to a different pickup and so i rewired it to parallel and it fixed the problem like it's now it sounds great a uh, lot of has great clarity um still has a good mid-range to it that's what i like about ceramics they typically will have a little more mid-range content which i think is great and growly so it keeps that a little bit of a I don't say aggressive mid-range to it a little bit. Uh, just just something in the mids that I really like about the ceramic pickups, especially in the Music Man style. Uh, P-Bass I prefer, um, Al Nico, uh, but certain like humbuckers and stuff, I really like ceramics. It just seems like it has a little better mid-range, something other going on that I like. And even in jazz pickups, jazz bass pickups and ceramic are actually really, uh, I've played a few of those and they've been really nice. Uh, even in like guitar for strats and stuff, I've played some ceramics that I liked over Al Nico's. But, I'm gonna get back to the subject. Uh, anyway, so yeah, 
the stream mutes, uh, when adding the stream mutes and, and the pickup, I mean, it's, this thing nails so many tones. I mean, you can get so many tones from modern to vintage, and then when you add distortion, the, and turn the, uh, turn the treble down, or the highs, turn the highs down and have the stream mutes, it sounds like a synth. I mean, it's so cool to hear that with distortion, and it sounds so synthy. So, uh, yeah, but um, I'll give you a little closer look. Came out great. I'm so happy with this thing. This seriously is um, like the perfect stingray. I'm not joking. Uh, for me, anyway, because I like the thinner nut width, like I said. And this has it. I mean, this is this is the base. I wasn't sure about basswood. You know, I don't want to be one of those wood snobs, but sometimes I do feel like certain woods offer certain uh, qualities. But I'm sold on the basswood and maple combo. It works like a champ. Has uh, great clarity, has great uh, growl still to it. I love like a, uh, like well, I got the mutes on so it kind of takes away that growl. But anyway, that mid-range rumble that you get, that growl in there, uh, it sounds so good. I love this bass. And really, this is, this is like my Desert Island bass, I will say, because I can pretty much play this and it fits anything I've thrown at it so far. Anything I've played, I've been able to EQ it in some form or fashion to work in the mix. And and it plays so good. Like the action's so good. Typically on these bases, something that's $299, you're never gonna get this thing playing that great. But this thing has uh, might not have mega low action, but it's low enough to where there's no effort to fret it. It's not fighting you like a lot of P bases will. Uh, this thing plays so good. And yeah. But anyway, I'll do another video with some sound samples so you can get an idea of that. And, uh, but yeah. Oh, and shout out to my buddy Terry Koval down in Atlanta, Georgia for his restaurant, The Deer and the Dove. Great place. I stopped by there and got to see him and he loaded me down with some shirts and some little, some food and everything. And so if you ever get a chance here in Atlanta, check out The Deer and the Dove. Awesome place, man. Fine dining, uh, but casual. It's, uh, and it's such a great atmosphere. You'll love it. And, but yeah, check it out, man. They play, play punk rock music while serving you fine, fine dining, so you can't beat it. Uh, but until next time, keep playing.